Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a vinyl update where I let you guys know uh, the vinyl releases that have sort of recently gone into my record collection over here. It's been a while since I've done a vinyl update and this isn't even half of the records that I have procured since I did my vinyl, uh, my last vinyl update. So I'm actually kind of really sorry that uh, I have not <laughs> done a vinyl update recently, but um, I've just had a lot to do lately, a lot to catch up on, haven't had the time to put a lot of records on the record player until recently, um, and that's why I'm doing this vinyl update over here. Cool? Cool. All right, um, let's get into it. I don't even know where to put this stuff as of right now. Okay, let's let's just let's just put it all on my lap. Whew. And start off with something that is super rare. Um, a limited edition volume two 2017 Shushu and Heidi Han, artist Heidi Han, coming together for a seven inch over here, which is also paired with a print that Heidi did. So it's kind of like it's it's kind of like a double double deal sort of thing. Um, the print itself is pretty cool. I think at some point I will frame it. I forgot who sent this to me or how I came into it. I apologize for that, for being a Dumbo. Um, and there's like a certificate on the back to sort of notify that this is tw number 25 of 200. So um, I don't know if you can get your hands on this. It's pretty nice. There's a very strange and odd and very disturbing sort of noise and spoken word and drone and spoken word piece on the A side of this seven inch, which is like this really cool orange and black print. And then on the B side of this thing, for whatever reason, there's like a xylophone cover of uh, Mozart's Turkish March, which is actually a good song. I think that's a good piece of classical music, uh, but sort of unexpected. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, it's basically kind of like a bit of a uh, sort of like, um, uh, an explanation of, uh, you know, each of the tracks on the 7-inch, and, uh, you know, Heidi Hahn sort of uh, having a little explanation here of uh, the, the sort of art print that came with this thing. Uh, but a really cool sort of rare little double sort of collaborative uh, collaborative art piece here. So shout out to Shushu and Heidi Hahn on that. Hopefully there's still some of these uh, available so people can get this once they see this video, because it is kind of a cool little package. And again, I will sort of put an effort to get that framed. Uh, moving on from there, shout out to the band Crying. I got this like <laughs> last year at some point. This is one of my favorite albums of last year. This is how long it's been since I've talked about some of my vinyl uh, releases that I picked up. Um, but this album is really fun. Listening to it on record, I did not get the impression that it was as lo-fi as it was when I had heard uh, it digitally, which is actually like kind of a nice surprise. You know, and that's the thing about vinyl. Some albums sound exactly like they do on a CD or as they do on an MP3. And some records really kind of gain an entirely fuller, newer sound once you actually listen to them on a record. And this is definitely one of those examples, in my opinion. Um, you know, pretty straightforward sleeve over here uh, with a little bit of poetry, it seems, right there. Uh, some liner notes over there. Um, I like the sleeve sort of has the printed crying sort of a name on the back over there uh, with a Stereo Gum quote. Shout out to Stereo Gum and shout out to Run For Cover Records for putting this band out and putting this record out because it is a fantastic record. It's a very fun, angular, mathy, twee piece of indie rock that's uh, very sharp, very creative. And I love this sort of uh, color here. You know, it's, it's not even like, um, it's not a splatter. It's more like a dusting, sort of like the color of the the, the sort of light blue or the white that sort of is poured into the red. It's like a dust. It's like a weird sort of dusty kind of pattern to it. It's very nice on the eyes. Um, love the red color. Love the way that the dusty sort of color contrasts with it. Very nice. The uh, pressing sounds great. Again, very bassy and full. And um, I'll say one more time, not quite as lo-fi as, uh, as it sort of came off listening to it digitally. Um, let me actually put it uh, b, 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 the right way. Thank you. Put it put it back. Okay, there we go. All right, moving on from there. A shout out to my dude, Kieran J. Callanan. Um, his record label sent me this after I did the review of the album, which was uh, very very nice of them. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> if you own this, if you own this, you know what I'm looking at right now. Actually, let me, let me, let me, let me put it this way. Um, here we go. There, there's the inner sleeve. I cannot show you the bottom of the inner sleeve right here. Okay, I cannot show you the bottom. So I have the, uh, the, this part sort of covering it. I cannot show you the rest of this. I'll, I'll just put it that way. But he is bronzed and looking just as uh, brown as the leather couch that he is on. And some of the bronzer is clearly coming off on the leather couch. He is really shiny. It's kind of gross looking. <laughs> And we have a lyric sheet on the inner sleeve over here. And the vinyl is a very heavy pressing. Like, it is a very heavy pressing. It has to be 180 gram. And it's just a pretty straightforward black record with a nice sort of uh, watery or sort of marble blue uh, labeling right there to sort of match with the rest of the cover art. And, um, you know, the record itself is very bassy. It's very heavy. It's very full. Uh, it's very funky and groovy. And that is sort of enhanced with, you know, the little bit of a bass boost that you typically get on a record. Um, this one I haven't even opened yet because I've heard it a million times and I haven't put it on the record player yet. Uh, but I, I just picked this up sort of after I did my um, uh, my MF Doom Worst to Best because while I do have my reservations with this record, listening back to it did make me kind of miss it and uh, you know regret having given up my CD copy of the album uh, back in the day when I did. It made me feel like a, a dumbo. Um, and, you know, obviously this comes with the Danger Doom EP that they put out later and some B-sides and extra stuff. And obviously, since I'm opening it right now, I have not put it on the record player yet. But because I've heard it so many times, I'm sure it sounds fine. I'm sure it sounds great. But, uh, wow, cool. Damn. This is a nice, this is a nice sort of like triple LP gatefold deal we have going on here. That is very cool. This is very nice. Danger Doom. Uh, this, I believe, is just going to be probably disc one, A and B, side B, side A. The other one is probably going to be, you know, disc two. The other one's probably going to be uh, the, uh, the, the EP that they put out of, of sort of extra tracks together. I don't know what... Um... And I got this. So th there, there are still copies of this in circulation. Uh, El Chupa Nibre, Perfect Hair 2, Corn Dog, Skit 2, Sofa King Remix, Space Hose Mad Lib Remix, Mad Nice featuring Vinny Price, Spokesman. So there, there's, there's some of the extra tracks right there. But nice, man. Wow, I didn't even know this was a triple LP. That's really awesome. I cannot wait to actually give a listen to this when I do get a chance. But very, very pleased with that. That's an epic gatefold. And all the records seem really heavy. This is like a monstrous sort of package right here. <sighs> Shout out to one of my favorite records of the year, Abibio Sound Machine. Hey, you got to give a listen to this thing. It's Indietronic. It's funky. It's uh, new wavy. It's dance punky. Uh, huge elements of Afrobeat in the music as well. Um... You know, uh, singing in the Abibio in the Abibio language for more for most of the LP. Uh, really fun album. Really funky, full, and um, sort of a, a cool blend of sort of electronic and acoustic elements in the band's music. Check out my review of this record, please. Um, I, I really don't know what else to say about it other than that. You know, that bassiness, that funkiness is again. It's sort of really enhanced with the. Uh, the vinyl, it is a thick record, and it's a nice, clear, beautiful blue album. That is a wonderful color that Merge gave this uh, gave this record. That's really cool. And I just like how the color scheme of the record sort of just uh, matches up, you know, really well with the orange in her uh, uh, clothing here, and the blue of the record sort of matches her clothing as well. It's a nice sort of a uh, planned out color scheme for the vinyl packaging. And I don't know if I got this because I ordered it early or something, but it sort of came with this this print. That's, uh, that's very nice. Looks like a poster print or something like that. Uh, but shout out to Bibio Sound Machine because this is one of the funnest, funkiest, and most vibrant records that I've heard this year and sounds amazing on vinyl. Uh, another one of my favorite albums of the year, shout out to Mr. Father John Misty, Pure Comedy. Had to get this thing. Had to have it! Um, this is one of the best vinyl packages I have seen this year. If you love this album, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting the deluxe version, and I'm pretty sure that there are probably still some copies in circulation. Like, this is fantastic. Not only are you sort of getting this nice plastic sleeve, 
I, uh, I picked up a couple copies, uh, a couple of which I think I'm gonna do a giveaway with. Um, so you have a nice, you know, wonderful plastic sleeve that sort of encapsulates the whole thing. And then this is a sleeve as well, this cool, awesome mural uh, on the front and back. And then these records sort of slide out of the sleeve itself. And uh, apparently with each copy of the deluxe version, there is an awesome holographic card here which uh, is actually a really amazing addition. Let me kind of like zoom that in for you so you can kind of see what's going on there. So yes, it's a holographic card. It's like a tarot card. It says despair and it's a depiction of a skeleton just like <laughs> blowing leaves with a leaf blower. And this is apparently one of several different holographic cards that you could get. And uh, there's like a whole deck of these that you can get off of Father John Misty's um, uh, website as well. Like these tarot cards that sort of uh, depict elements of this huge, amazing, gigantic mural on the album cover. And the whole double LP thing over here, you know, you kind of have different elements of sort of like night, day, rainbow, different sort of colors on each side of the, uh, of the, uh, you know, vinyl sleeve, which is really nice. Um, and the records themselves are different colors, like you sort of have this milky, sort of white clear with, um, you know, sort of white splatters sort of thrown in there. And uh, then on the other one, it's sort of like an orange goldish with some, with some like darker orange splatters, which is kind of like a nice, beautiful touch. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the record art kind of looks different depending on which, you know, sort of album sleeve you have kind of poking out of it. It's like a really immaculate, amazing package. Um, the card, the different sleeves, the lyric sheet, the additional album art over here on the other side of the lyric sheet. Like, it's really cool. And I really love the imagery of, you know, this crazy sort of chaotic, um, you know, really kind of apocalyptic and uh, uh, amazing mural. Like, it totally matches up with the dark humor of the album itself. And um, I think really kind of enhances the the vibe and the personality of the album as well. You know, this is like an example of somebody really, really, really kind of going the extra mile, going the extra distance with their album art, you know? I mean, you know, people say to me like, hey, does album art matter? You know, and I think for the most part, it, it, it's not the biggest deal, but I think that's usually because people are typically putting in, a, in about the same amount of effort into most album covers, you know? Like, there's some album covers that are complete ass, and obviously, you know, no effort went into it. And there's some album covers, uh, you know, and, and obviously, you know, they kind of ruin the experience or make you not want to try the record out. And then there are some packages where clearly th they're really trying, and this is very much an example of that. I would say, um, but yeah, loving the hell out of this out of this vinyl package, and the record itself sounds immaculate. Uh, and it also came with this seven inch of uh, "Real Love" and "Rejected Generic Pop Song," uh, March fifteen, number three, which actually I've not put on the record player yet. So I've just actually been playing the LP itself. Um, it does seem like you know sort of a nice addition to the deluxe package, though. So again, highly recommended if you love this album. This this deluxe package is great. Like there's so much to it, you know, between the album art and just the, uh, um, the color of the vinyl and um, you know the holographic card. There's just so much about it. All right, this next handful of records comes from my boys over at um, Earache Records. Who, when I did a previous vinyl update, uh, they were like. Hey man, you talked about the full dynamic range records that we just came out with. You know, do you want us to send you some more? And I said, sure. And I also pre-ordered one too because they sounded so good. Um, so this next like bunch of them all comes from from that. This is the one I pre-ordered, of course. Second Napalm Death record over here uh, from Enslavement to Obliteration. And uh, goddamn, like the full dynamic range records that these guys are putting out sound heavy as fuck. Like Scum. I've had like, you know, digital copies of Scum, CD copy of Scum. I always thought the album sounded a little bit like ass, obviously, which is part of the reason a lot of people are turned off by it. But the the mix on this record is so bassy and it's so full, it kind of balances out just how harsh some of the guitars and the really frantic drumming on this album are. And it just is a little more even and listenable, in my opinion. Um, 
you know, obviously with these full dynamic range records, they are copying, you know, the records straight from the original tapes, which is exactly what you want on vinyl. You know, records are great, vinyl is great, but the thing is, a, a majority of newer records and newer vinyl, you're just taking a digital single and throwing it onto an analog medium, which, you know, kind of defeats the purpose a little bit when you're talking about the original and the fullest fidelity that you can get on a record. However, when you're taking the original analog tapes and you're putting them onto the record, that's from analog to analog. That's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you're getting with these full dynamic range records. And, um, you know, these records sound heavy. They sound nasty as hell. Um, the recordings sound really live and in the moment. They sound like a document of an occurrence of a happening. They don't sound like a studio product. Uh, they're really nasty. They're really grimy, super aggressive. Um, at least the Napalm Death record. Um, that's also the case for, uh, you know, Bolt Thrower over here. This fucking album is so goddamn heavy, which I'm sure is kind of enhanced a little bit, um, you know, just by the fact that it's on vinyl. But Realm of Chaos, man, like this, this, this record came out in 1989, this death metal album. It's a really great death metal album. Um, but 1989, how did they get this shit so heavy? This album is so goddamn heavy. It's so full. It's so gargantuan. It's so crushing. Um, I just love how brutal and uh, sick the band's sound is on this thing. Um, to sort of go back to the Napalm Death just for a second, um, you know, it's pretty standard sleeve over here with a lyric sheet, picture of the band on the back, thanks. Seems like they've stayed pretty true to the original printing of the, the albums as they could. Um, you know, the records are black, decent sort of pressing on the albums, not too thin, not super thick either. Um, uh, you know, not like, uh, I guess, uh, inconveniently thick. <laughs> you know, just a decent, decent sort of thickness. Um, but again, the bolt thrower is so heavy. It's so gargantuan. I just love the way that they um, treated the way this album sounded. Um, liking the lyric sheet on here as well with some of the... Uh, you know, sort of original depictions of the uh, robots um, that sort of are depicted on the front, which if you sort of look up the history and the story behind them, it's pretty interesting sort of where they got the whole concept for the album art and sort of where all that came from. Um, also, they passed me a copy of a uh, Davey Morbid Angel album, which, um, you know, as I said, my death metal starter pack, you know, obviously there are very aggressive, very grimy, very grim and brutal death metal, death metal elements to this album, but obviously... The thrash sort of influence is huge on this album. Um, you know, it is very much a good death metal starter album for people who are kind of trying to dip their toes into the genre because it, it'll, it'll sound like things you're familiar with in the metal world already. Um, it is a very fast, intense, and uh, amazing album. And listening back to it, like, there are some, I don't know, elements of what sounds like some crazy, warped, and, like, very high-pitched, nutty guitar sounds that I'm like sort of sitting here crazed as you know sitting here like how the hell did they do that shit because there's there's like some crazy shit on this album as far as like sound play that you typically don't hear on like a lot of death metal albums um badass picture of the band right there looking sick looking badass looking mean looking looking occult as fuck um pretty straightforward as far as the uh <laughs> album cover over here <laughs> I love this picture of what sounds, it's, it's like this skeleton dude, like playing flute on a fucking bone. Very nasty, grim lyric sheet right there. Nice pressing on the record itself, uh, standard black sort of color. Although morbid, a, a black morbid angel record, I think is kind of significant. You know, it's, it's almost like, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's not just a black record like any other black record, it's black like your soul, because it's a morbid angel album. And uh, also, Carcass's uh, Heartwork, really great record. Um, love just how melodic, but yet brutal this album is. Um, you know, really good quality death metal over here. And um, I don't know, just really, just really listenable too. I mean, you know, the clean sound and sort of the more pristine sort of production on this album, I think uh, will not scare off some people who may not be into a Cannibal Corpse or, you know, a Napalm Death, you know, second album or like... Um, um, an autopsy record or something like that. Um, you know, some of the guitar melodies, some of the heavy metal influences on this thing are really bright, really fun. Make the album oddly kind of catchy. You know, obviously really grim sort of album cover right there. And apparently the album sculpture that is depicted on the front is Giger. I didn't, I didn't even know that that was the case. 
Um, there's so many out, there's so many musicians who are like sort of greatly influenced by his work and have sort of featured his work on their stuff. But yeah, all of, you know, all of that earache, full dynamic range shit, like I highly recommend it. It sounds great. It sounds full. It's so crisp. You really get like the full sonic experience of the album. Um, I'm just really impressed with sort of the sound of these records. And uh, again, just how they came out. They just came out really good. Uh, moving on from there, um, got to give a shout out to my dude Phil Elverham. Uh, I picked this up uh, as soon as I saw it was announced uh, that you can get it on vinyl. And um, yeah, it's it's a pretty impressive package. It's actually kind of heartbreaking knowing what this album is about and looking at this photo of him uh, clutching his child on the back. Um, obviously, it's a very dark, it's a very dreary album. I mean, that is to sort of be expected. Uh, the record itself, when I listened when I listened to it digitally, sounded very intimate, sounded very much in the moment. Uh, I would say that sound is enhanced even more listening to it on record. Um, pretty standard pressing over here. Um, you know, black record, uh, white sleeve. Uh, there's a little bit of a sort of an insert over here as well with some words from Phil. Not only on the inner sleeve of the... Um, uh, sort of gatefold over here, but on the album itself, which I will not spoil for you, that kind of explain, you know, where he was coming from with the record, um, you know, sort of what was happening around that time, what inspired him, you know, to sort of make the album musically and sort of contextually. Obviously, what the album is about is very clear, but, um, you know, he mentions a couple different things, including, you know, Sun Kills Moon Benji is kind of a, you know, a reference point that kind of got him back on the horse of wanting to write and record, you know, in general, not just sort of about this experience. I mean, it's a very powerful listen. It's a very powerful album. It's it's still a soul-crushing record, but I have to say that, you know, with more listens, it, it does kind of, I, I guess, kind of the trauma and the shock of what the album is about and just kind of what Phil describes. I guess the beauty of the music and his compositions kind of reveal themselves a little bit more. You know, I think initially kind of the impact of what the album is kind of really hits you, you know, and um, kind of distracts from what's so good about the album musically. And I feel like the more I listen to it, the more that kind of comes across. Uh, a full more, a couple more, a couple more. Um, shout out to the good people over at Vinyl Me Please, who uh, I'm, you know, a member over there. So they sent me a copy of uh, Gorilla's Demon Days when they did a... Uh, uh, thing for that. And uh, it's a really immaculate, full, like pristine sounding pressing. This album sounds amazing. It's got a nice gatefold over here that actually kind of depicts like almost like single art for every single track on the album. We have some credits over here. Um, you know, pictures of each member of the group as they are shown on the front, sort of big and fat on the record sleeves. And it's a nice sort of deep uh, somewhat clear, you know, light sort of shines through a nice deep red uh, record, which is very nice. Oh, and actually it's kind of like a alternative photos of the band members sort of like smiling and looking very villainous on the uh, labeling of the record itself, which is actually pretty nice. Um, but yeah, really impressed with the record pressing and really impressed with the album art, uh, but the the, the vinyl itself sounds immaculate, sounds amazing. If you love this record, God, it sounds so good on vinyl. It sounds so crisp, it sounds so clean, it sounds so full. Um, yeah, I'm just really just generally impressed with the sound of this thing. Now I'm gonna try to fit it back into the sleeve, which I'm gonna have a hard time with because the wrong part of what I feel like is the flap on the sleeve is sticky. I feel like the sleeve itself the sleeve itself here should be what's sticky, not the flap, because if the flap is sticky, then the record sticks on the flap. And that's not the case with this one, but sometimes the flap is so sticky, the glue is so sticky, the minute it touches the freaking record, the record, it rips the album cover and it makes me want to die. Uh, <laughs> and also, shout out to Vinyl Me Please, because they hooked me up with this goddamn Fiona Apple record. This is the first time this is on vinyl. This has never been on vinyl before. Fiona Apple, title, never been on freaking vinyl before. And it sounds great. God, it's so full. It's so amazing. I mean, I've mostly interacted with this album on cassette and on the radio because that's when it was popular. That's, that's what people were listening on when I was a kid. Uh, so I've never heard it on record. 
And I've never owned a CD copy of it either, but listening to it here, it just sounds amazing. It sounds full. It's kind of just taken me down uh, a trip down memory lane, to be completely honest. Love the gatefold. Uh, the record is pretty much just a standard, uh, but very thick black pressing. Um, it's very nice, just sounds great. And uh, there's a very big sort of booklet and lyric sheet that came with the album with all these, you know, very moody, intimate pictures of uh, Fiona, which uh, again, it's, I'm really impressed with the package. I don't know if this is still available, but um, I don't know, man, just really impressed all around with, uh, with what Vinyl Me Please did with this and what the, the label did with this. It's really amazing that this is on vinyl and it's really amazing that it sounds so great on record, but honestly, I'm not, uh, not surprised. And, um, you know, again, for somebody who sort of grew up with this album being relevant and having these songs on the radio and my mom loving this album, because I'm pretty sure she had the cassette too, um, uh, you know, and, and we would enjoy these songs. We enjoyed a lot of Fiona Apple music. You know, there were a lot of uh, big female singer-songwriters that back in the day, Sheryl Crow, Alanis Morissette, Jewel, Fiona Apple, um, Tori Amos was doing her thing too, um, you know, that my mom was like a really big fan of. And I grew up with a lot of that stuff. I grew up listening to a lot of those singer-songwriters. And, uh, you know, again, this is really the trip down memory lane for me. Um, Got to give a shout out to the good people over at King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard Flying Microtonal Banana Wonderful Fun little uh, sort of pressing over here. Banana Yellow Pressing, very nice fun color. Um, fun cool color scheme, I love kind of the matte finish of the sort of sleeve over here, lyric sheet, you know, liner notes and all that sort of stuff. And again, I just love the color scheme of this thing. And um, again, I'm sort of looking at the album art over here and it says Volume 1 of sort of this, these adventures in microtonal tuning. And I don't know if uh, they're actually gonna come back to this. You know, I could imagine that they could come out with another record of this stuff. Hopefully I, I, hopefully they will push further down this road and experiment a little bit more so that it's a bit stranger and a bit more adventurous, you know, and not just simply rehash what they did here. But, um, you know, I'm hoping they kind of revisit this sound because this is one of the coolest records I think the band has ever done. Um, Really liking the, uh, again, the color scheme. It looks wonderful. It looks fun. It looks beautiful in the, uh, in the album. Uh, not rather the, uh, the camera sort of video viewer. And it sounds great too. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention, and uh, I'm looking at this. Okay, there was like a little bit of glue on here. There's, there's a little bit of gookus. There's a little bit of gookus on this thing. I don't know where the heck this gookus is coming from. It's coming right off. And some of you are probably like cringing, looking at me, sort of just try to wipe it off over here. But I have no idea where this gookus came from. There's a little bit of gookus on this. And um, maybe I shouldn't be considering uh, that I picked this up and it was uh, somewhat expensive, but um, I picked up the Bob's Burgers musical album. Uh, this is basically all the music from the show. I love Bob Bur Bob's Burgers. I think it's a great, hilarious show. Tina is my spirit animal. Um, I don't know, there's so much funny banter and jokes on the show. I love the animation, I love the uh, humor style. Um, you know, I love uh, John Benjamin, you know, I think he's a great, um, you know, uh, voice actor. You know, pretty much every animation he's ever been involved in, I am uh, at least somewhat of a fan of. Um, and uh, this is probably one of my favorite tunes that he's ever been involved with. So I just kind of needed to pick this up because I am a big fan of the show. And, um, you know, this to me means a little bit more than just simply buying, like, you know, a season of the show or something like that. Um, and this, and the package here is immaculate. It's fun. It's crazy. It's, like, totally insane and off the wall. Like, just to kind of get into just the cover, I mean, it's super thick and there's, like, this awesome sort of imagery of every single sort of character on the show sort of thrown onto the side. And then going into there, the One-Eyed Snakes fans of the show will know what the hell this is from. This is a literal patch. This is a literal fucking patch. There's a sticker pack, like tons of stickers from the show. Um, a cool little insert that uh, does thank yous and um, you know, sort of explains... Um, uh, you know, like a little bit of uh, everything about a lot of the songs and obviously, you know, you're seeing every sort of person from the show here. Um, Bob's Burgers musical album. This is like the first thing that hits you once you open it. 
And then from there, the first thing that, uh, you know, per piece of media or whatever is the actual vinyl itself, uh, which is a nice sort of big triple LP. This is sort of like the white seven inch with um, uh, Stephen Merritt, uh, the song Electric Love, um, St. Vincent's Bad Girls, um, the national, uh, the couple of national songs that were on the, that were on the show. Um, man, this is crazy. Uh, nice sort of, you know, triple gatefold thing depicting the whole Bob's Burgers neighborhood. Um, each record itself is a different color. You have like a ketchup red record, you have a green one, you have like a yellowish one. Um, nice sort of opaque vinyl with sort of the sub pop and the 20th Century Fox logo on the labeling as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually have not played the vinyl because I've just been playing the digital. Like, honestly, I have not put anything on the turntable from this package because I've just been admiring the package itself. Like, beyond that, the sheet music sampler. There's literally piano and ukulele sheet music from the show on this thing. Uh, lifting up the skirt of the night. This is working. Uh, Derek Demetopoulos. Uh... Work Hard or Die Trying Girl. I love that episode. Um, Happy Crappy Place. Um, the Spirits of Christmas. Uh, Bad Stuff Happens in the Bathroom. <laughs> which is a pretty fun song. Uh, so yes, literal sheet music, ukulele and piano from the show. And then there's a series of posters that they hit you with, like a handful of different posters from the show that, I mean, unfortunately they had to fold them, you know, uh, it, uh, but, I mean, it's like, and they're gigantic posters. There's four of these gigantic posters on the show at what looks like different kind of like creativity points of like the, the art and the sort of animation. Because, you know, Bob's Burgers, they, just like The Simpsons, they've kind of evolved into the look that they have right now. Um, you know, there's kind of like a slicker, like 90s looking version of the, of, the show poster over here that has more of like a shinier finish. Um, here's another sort of depiction of all of the characters in the show on a poster, but it's uh, sort of like the original sort of like uh, depictions of the characters with like, you know, different like facial sort of uh, uh, makeups and all that sort of stuff. And then there is finally the hardcover lyrical book from the album, which is another amazing piece of just like, you know, this thing, ding, ding da, ding, ding, butts, 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 theme from Banjo, uh, you got beef Sasquatched, this is working, again, the lyrics to that itsy bitsy stripper, sex, 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 I want to hear your secrets, like, this is awesome, like, as somebody who is a fan of the show, this is just like, so amazing and just kind of like goes to show and goes to tribute just how how much there is to the show you know not only the humor but also the musical element and just kind of the fact that each character has their own kind of unique interesting personality um you know it's it's definitely one of my favorite animated shows ever you know not just one of my favorite animated shows on tv right now but uh definitely one of my favorite animated shows ever and i was really happy to be able to pick this up because, you know, it does sort of celebrate and, uh, you know, sort of highlight exactly what I think kind of makes the show so special and unique. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, that's going to pretty much just go into my collection and, uh, you know, and I'll, uh, you know, sort of observe it and, uh, admire it every once in a while. <laughs> uh, because this, this is just one of the few moments where I, I allow myself in my, in my record collection to have something that I just have it merely to collect it. You know, I mean, pretty much everything I have in my collection, I actually play, you know, and I actually use like, you know, a record. Um, but again, this is one of the few moments I've sort of allowed myself to be like, okay, this is my, this is me being a collector. This is my collector thing. This is my collector thing that I'm collecting and I'm just collecting it and that's it just cause I want it. Um, but yeah, that's it for this vinyl update. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys got some good recommendations on stuff in here and, uh, you see my shirt being ridiculous and clinging to me. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one forever.